Hey everybody, welcome to The Bottom Line. I'm Michael Nolan and tonight we continue on in our exploration of all the amazing tricks that the Beatles utilized to create the masterpiece Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. So as we covered in our last video, the Beatles decide to shelve temporarily, yet again, a day in the life. During this time period, they record three more tracks. Tonight, we're going to cover the recordings of Getting Better, Good Morning, Good Morning, and Fixing a Hole. Now, Emmerich says that the recording of the basic tracks for two of these songs, Fixing a Hole and Good Morning, Good Morning, were pretty straightforward and nothing remarkable coming out of those sessions, with one of those sessions being recorded without him being present at Regent Sound Studio. As for Good Morning, Good Morning, he says basically they just went in, got the job done, added a couple of overdubs, and shelved that recording for later on as well. Now at these same sessions, they also turned their attention to Paul McCartney's Fixing a Hole. This was recorded a few days earlier without Jeff Emmerich being present. George Martin was there because he was an independent producer and could go ahead and attend those sessions different studios, different equipment, and this is where they had to make some technical adjustments to the tapes. Now, as a bit of a side note, it's interesting to ask which Beatle played what instrument on these tracks, and there are different lines of thought. Now, in the Beatles Monthly Magazine at the time, Neil Aspinall credits Paul McCartney with playing harmonium, and we know that these tapes, the Beatles played live. So of course that left Ringo on drums, George on guitar, and John Lennon on bass. Being a live track, John Lennon's bass wasn't going to be going anywhere. Now, according to George Martin, though, he remembered playing the harmonium, and that would have freed Paul to go ahead and play bass. He was there that day, but that kind of conflicts with other reports that all four Beatles were on this track. And maybe it's possible that George Martin was even misremembering because he had played harmonium on a Beatle track before. The notes that are played, the way the bass part is developed is very McCartney. But there are portions to the line that deviate from his style. I think McCartney developed the basic idea of the bass line and John fiddled with it. There are places, if you give a real close listen to this track, where it doesn't quite have that McCartney feel. But all in all, it's a wonderful bass track, so kudos, John. Either way, this is the one track on the entire album where the bass guitar was not added as an overdub later in the recording process. Okay, so it's also interesting here, Jeff Emmerich was not there for the initial basic recording of Getting Better. Both him and Richard Lush was given the night off, but the Beatles decided to go ahead and carry on without that team, with George Martin, Malcolm Addy, and Ken Townsend. But the very next night, Jeff Emmerich was on the job and the Beatles were not happy with the sound of the drums of the recording. Ringo especially was irritated at this point. But at this point, Jeff Emmerich decided to go ahead and leave the track as it was and would later on, in post-editing, correct that sound. Here they turn to some overdubs. On this overdub, there would be George Harrison playing the tambora, Ringo on an open hi-hat, and George Martin on a virginal. Now, a virginal is a miniature harpsichord that George Martin owned and brought from his home especially for this recording. Of course, the same close mic recording techniques were applied to George Martin's playing and even Ringo Starr's playing. But here he spent extra special attention on George's tambora. A few recording sessions earlier, he had been asked to work with Ravi Shankar and his group of musicians in an adjacent studio there at Abbey Road. On these sessions, he developed even 
further close miking techniques and started learning to record Indian mixes and Indian musicians were starting to sound better than they had ever sounded already. And Ravi Shankar and his group were very excited by the sounds that he had developed for them. So here he employed some of those techniques on George's tambura. Later that night, Paul McCartney remained behind after the other Beatles left to further work on his bass part. This was something that he was starting to do pretty regularly during these sessions. Jeff remembers adding a slight bathroom-like echo, echo, echo to Paul's bass here. Paul generally did not like echo on bass guitars, but he allowed it this night, and a re-listen to this song explains a whole lot as to where the bass fits in the mix. Another wonderful bass trick by Jeff Emmerich not repeated on a Beatle track again. All right, so that about wraps it up for tonight's video. In our next video, we will continue on with the recording process for A Day in a Life. And don't forget, we still haven't come to my very favorite track on Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. And of course, that gem is coming up too. A big shout out to all of our viewers. Thank you so much. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up and consider hitting the share button if you know somebody who might be interested in this content. And of course, please feel free to hit that subscribe button. Just hit subscribe to the tribe and hit that top bell notification and you'll be notified of all future videos. Once again, this is The Bottom Line. I'm Michael Nolan, and we'll see you on Down the Line. It's time to say